and all I saw was I-15 and black skid marks. And at that point, it dawned on me that I needed to connect some dots because that was not the full story. Tonight, you'll hear the full story, the events that led up to the death of a wife and mother of five. Mike and Dini. Yeah, Dave, the family of Emily Dykes wants to share her difficult story in hopes of spreading awareness about mood disorders. Many of us may not realize their association with postpartum depression. New specialist Sam Penrod shares more on the family's effort they call the Emily Effect. Your talents, your beauty, your kindness, your touch. A keyboard is the only way Eric Dykes can tell his wife we miss and love you, love Eric. A love story that began when they were both eight years old. I think back to about the third grade is really when I was drawn to her. She was my first date. She was my first kiss. We were married in October of 1998. Eric and Emily were happy raising four children and were excited to welcome a fifth child to their family. And it was just, you know, kind of the dream. It's our last child, we're making the most of it. But soon after she returned home from the hospital in March of last year, Emily's mental health began to suffer. A few days after she got home, I could sense that she was very, very different. Emily was agitated and depressed. She consulted her OBGYN who prescribed some antidepressants and her condition began to improve. So by August, she thought she no longer needed the medication. But as time went on, the anxiety returned and she began having panic attacks. The sensation is, you're in a burning building. This is how she described it to her husband. You try to get to safety, you're trying to get somewhere safe. Or others have described it as you're drowning and you, you, you cannot, you're fighting for air. Frankly, people don't understand panic attacks very well in general. The Dykes made several visits to the ER and then Emily began seeing psychiatrist Tom Draschel who told the Dykes Emily's symptoms suggested more than postpartum depression possibly PTSD. You can get um, PTSD from uh, uh, delivering a baby. You know, if something went wrong in the delivery. And for Emily, it did. It was a traumatic event for both of us. Emily had serious complications during labor, and after delivering Trey, her doctor feared she might be at risk for a fatal embolism. I honestly thought I was losing my wife. And I think she, I think she thought she was going too. By the end of January, the anxiety overwhelmed Eric and Emily. Their insurance wouldn't cover outpatient treatment, so Emily willingly checked herself into a psychiatric hospital their insurance would cover. But Emily was just one of two women in the facility and felt out of place. There's someone that just came in here and he continues to talk about his felonies, and it's really scary. After what Eric calls 11 grueling nights, Emily was released. And for the next two weeks, they believed her struggles were finally over. But on February 24th, her anxiety exploded again. She couldn't sleep. Eric comforted her throughout the night. And in the morning, she decided to go visit her parents. She was just suffering so much. And she came down that day because of the love that we, that we have. But that afternoon, as her dad was driving her home... She went from that anxiety to the panic so very quickly. It, it was really stunning to me, and I was not prepared for it. Lynn Cook was talking with Eric on the phone as Emily began suffering a panic attack in the car along I-15. And so it was like the perfect storm in the sense that we were on the freeway, and I had no alternative as, as, to, to stop. And uh, she was able to get out of the vehicle and wandered on the freeway and uh, very disoriented. Eric could hear the commotion, then the phone was silent. I don't think Emily was trying to take her own life. I do not believe that. But at this point, it doesn't matter. The illness was very, very deep. Eric believes they did everything they could to help Emily. I wouldn't suggest that I would blame any, you know, the caregivers. We, ha we took advantage, full advantage, of the, the medical resources that we had at our disposal. I've since come to find out there's other resources. It's a pleasure for me to be here tonight. Eric found those resources are underfunded and not readily accessible. And that is what he hopes to change through the Emily Effect Foundation. She was such a good mother. And that's what she wanted to be was a mother. Depression is the number one complication of childbirth, but few mothers are screened for mood disorders. Eric wants to change that. I think the one thing that I've, I, I've really learned 
through this process is we need to anticipate better. In Utah, there are only a handful of therapists who have specialized training in perinatal mental health. And the uneducated counselor can actually do much more harm than good. And thank you to women's services. Amy Rosewine directs the Utah Maternal Mental Health Collaborative and says, With the right help, you will be well. Full recovery is possible. And because of the Emily effect, more women are seeking help. I just wanted you to know that your wife literally saved my life. Emily's family is still coming to terms with her death. We've had some hard times, obviously. But as I look at them, I see her fingerprints and I feel her through them. And Trey, our one-year-old, he, uh, he keeps us happy. He can't wait to date. And knowing they can help other mothers has brought all those who loved Emily. Your camera still sits where you left it. A lot of peace. So for now, Em, we are dancing without you giving the best effort we can give. Dance on, Em. Well, this story is so heartbreaking, Emily's family believes it is a story of hope. They don't want women to be afraid. They want them to seek help and know this is very treatable. Eric's dream is for there to be a treatment facility in Utah specifically for new moms with a warm environment, more like a maternity room rather than a psychiatric ward where mothers are not separated from their babies. Eric also uh, says that Emily's family has offered support to the truck driver, knowing that he has been affected by this tragedy as well. I can imagine. Uh, so until that dream becomes a reality, where can women turn for help? They've started a website, emilyeffect.org. They've listed several resources where people can turn, but their main message is talk to someone, go ask for help, and people will be there to help you. Anticipate it, like he was saying. It's a powerful story, Sam. I'm, I'm sure it will help many women who are out there. Thank, Thank you. you.